I know that we still have some folks that are out in the expo space, but you are here and they will work their way here. And for schedule, we're gonna keep this going because I have so much content, I want you to get all of it. So, uh, so thanks for, for being here, thanks for participating. This is gonna be exciting. I'm looking forward to this. So the, the, the first thing is, is that, you know, Microsoft, to get them, you know, not that it's impossible, it's not impossible, obviously, but it's a delight that they flew down. Do we say S Seattle or do we say Redmond these days? Which way do we go? Puget Sound. <laughs> Although I'm based in San Diego, so it's not actually fair. But, <laughs> but give them a round of applause for being here. <laughs> so we're going to have a great... Uh, discussion. We're going to be talking about, if, if you didn't read the title, we're going to be talking about the new cloud partner program. I say new because to me I consider it new. And um, um, the Microsoft uh, MPN, uh, the Microsoft Partner Network, for all sense and purposes, at some point, I say at some point because it's not instant, at some point it's going to go away. And this new program, for all sense and purposes, will take its place. So what that really means is it's going to impact every one of you at some point in time, all of you. So you might as well learn about it, learn about it directly, and, uh, and, and we're going to try to share some exciting stuff. And we're we probably so. going to share a few elephants in the room and see if we can clear them up. And, uh, and we're gonna dive in. So let's, let's do introductions first. You're closest to me, so. Yeah, so Rob Reardon. So I look after Microsoft Partner Programs. So that's today, competencies, gold and silver, advanced specializations, Azure Expert MSP, as well as the Action Pack program. Basically any partner program except for, unfortunately, I heard there were a lot of questions at the booth. I do not own NCE, so I'm not an expert on that, so I won't be able to address any questions on that but happy to take any questions and we can get you routed to the right person. And I will also introduce Dan Rippey, who is sitting there in the audience, who is part of our team. And he leads not only our team, but also our compliance team, as well as a lot of our digital experiences. So think partner.microsoft.com, where you can go today. I'll just plug that right off the bat, where you can find information about all of this program. Dan runs all of that. And I'm going to jump in just for a minute, and I have absolutely teased Dan that if they can't answer the question, you notice I do have one more chair up here. So, so they're going to have to do good on answering all the questions, or we just might get Dan up here after all. <laughs> hey, um, I'm Catherine Micklin. I am part of uh, Rob's team, part of the partner program, and I was the, the project lead for the solutions partner designation that we'll be talking about today. Let's check. Okay. Uh, my name is Tayyab Ali. If you struggle with my first name, you can call me Muhammad Ali as well. Um, I am with AlphaBold and VP Consulting Services. Uh, we are a Microsoft Gold partner. Excellent. You know, I want to kick this off with one question, and I'm going to try to do a percentage thing, and that is how many in the room have already heard at some level about this brand new one month announced Microsoft Cloud Partner? Raise your hand if, if you've heard about it. Okay, do the reverse. If you're like, what program? What are you talking about? I'm here to learn, but what are you talking about? Raise your hand. Don't be shy. We're almost half and half. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. So um, hopefully those of you that learned or heard about it, we're going to share quite a bit. And uh, those of you that have not yet, well, your ear is going to get a, an earful as the expression goes. So, um, you know, before I even ask why, why you did this, I think for the benefit of those in the room that have not heard it, can you do a 30-second what this is? Sure. Yeah, it, essentially, the name is changing. We like to call it an evolution, not a revolution of the program. We're not ripping and replacing everything here. But essentially, if you simplify it down, we're talking about moving from our 18 competencies that we have in market today across varying levels of our taxonomy, down to six 
solutions partner designations that exactly align with the six solution areas by which we go to market. The three across Azure, modern workplace, business applications, and security. We also are introducing significant new investments when it comes to product benefits. Um, things like Azure credits, Microsoft 365, E5 SKUs, significant additional investments there. And probably the most important thing that I should have probably said in the first 30 seconds is that if you like your benefit package today that you have as part of your silver or gold competency package, none of that changes. You can continue to renew and maintain those investments to continue to grow your business. I like the summary. I mean, it, it, I, I understood it. Made sense. So let's dive in. We're going to dive in with uh, why, why change anything? Why do this? Yeah, so I, I can take that one. And Catherine, please, please fill in where I miss anything. Essentially, it starts with the customer. We polled a ton of customers, asking them what would they like to see different about our partner program. And they've been demanding more for some time, giving us some good feedback. And I think one of the first things to provide customers with confidence and clarity of who they want to work with when they're choosing a service partner primarily, a couple things that came to mind were, A, let's make this simpler, right? As a 40 plus year old software company, as you can imagine, as you've, I'm sure, worked with, we have some complexity. And so we're looking to simplify that and bring it exactly, bring the program for partners exactly in line with how we go to, micro, how we go to market first party as Microsoft. The other key piece is that we're reinventing or we're changing the way that we measure performance. No longer do we care about just revenue thresholds and have you met this sales outcome short term. But it's more focused on the longer term outcomes, a more holistic score, you could say, that is arguably more inclusive. So we're looking at things like growth, customer growth. Can you actually drive great, successful customer outcomes and new deployments, net customer ads, avoid churn of your existing customers, as well as, of course, investing in skilling. So getting additional certifications is a really key piece of that, that score, which we're calling the partner capability score. And then third is really just investing more, investing more in our partners. And that's where you'll see Catherine will get into a lot more about what's actually in the box for each of these solution partner designations as well as additional investments we're providing when you get a specialization, when you go really deep in that technical stack. So, so, uh, so let's keep on going then. So, so Catherine, William, this one at you. And if, uh, for those of you who don't know, this, this new program has a, a scoring associated with it. There's 100 points uh, potentially possible and in order to become a new solution partner under the program, you need to reach 70 points. So you have a goal of getting 70 out of 100, and these 70 points are in different categories. So I'll toss the question, uh, how did the point system happen? How, how'd you come up with it? What made logical sense? And how does it benefit a partner? So there was a lot of uh, pages from our playbook. So one of them, Rob um, referenced, this was the survey we sent out to our customers, over 700 customers. Um, we wanted to ask them, when you are looking for a partner to pair with, what are you looking at? What is important to you when you are looking for an effective partner with your engagement? And at the top of the list for them was, we want our partners to be technically capable and we want them to have experience. We want them to be able to do similar solutions for um, potentially a, a similar profile of a customer. So they want to have that level of, uh, of a resume in a, in a partner to show the, the breadth capabilities from a technical perspective through certifications, and then the experience. Who, ha who else have you done this for, and how did it go? Um, so they're very interested in that. Um, I would say, Dave, you know, to your point around um, the 70 points, that's a, that's a paradigm shift for, for everyone in the room. I would be less focused on the 100 points, be very focused on the 70 points. That's what's going to get you across the finish line to be able to get the solutions partner designation. So if you're focused on the 100 points, that's very overwhelming, and it's not, and it's not needed, to be honest. Um, really focus on the tipping point around the 70 points you need to get that designation. So uh, clarify something really quick. Will it matter to how Microsoft 
promotes this to clients if a partner got 71 points versus 100 points? Maybe you could clarify that. Yes. Um, the, the secret sauce stays behind closed doors, so we don't disclose if you have 70 points or 100 points. Um, all the, the clients see is that the partner has achieved the solutions partner designation. This is also going to be a new muscle for us that we'll start exercising this summer where we're going to be doing um, a campaign directly with our customers to educate them on the new designations. Today, if you ask a, a customer or a client what is silver and gold, they don't have a good answer and many of them don't really know the difference between silver and gold. So we are really doubling down on educating our customers directly on the value and um, what is required from our partners to be able to achieve the solutions partner designations come October. So they have that level of understanding when they are also uh, deciding what partners to engage with in the future. So in getting ready for this, I talked to quite a few partners. I say quite a few, but a lot. And uh, what I found amazing is, is some partners, um, they, they have not even heard yet, like you found out in the room. They, they didn't even know about it. Other partners um, that heard about it really didn't understand it. And some partners, not only did they know about it, they kind of presumed, I don't get it, I've been doing this for a year. Meaning, boy, did I get mixed signals. Uh, so the question is, is number one, how has this been received in the market? and also help us understand why there's such different views from partner to partner on their knowledge of, what, of the program versus no knowledge. How, how does that happen? So I think PCI, so for those partners who focus on BizApp specifically, they were introduced to the similar holistic model of how we measure um, partner capability. So mm. I think that's where some of the confusion lies for BizApp's partners specifically who okay. have a vested interest in PCI and who have been working their tails off to achieve the BizApp's competency through the PCI model. So that PCI model is now going to be converting to the new partner capability score. So it will now be one of the six designations. So it'll be the BizApps designation. So we had a lot of lessons learned with PCI. So we've certainly um, incorporated the good and um, the not as good, we've uh, been a lesson learned for us, specifically around functional consultant growth. That has been such a headache for our partners and been very challenging to get points on that. Um, so we're getting away from functional consultant growth. Um, we're combining um, develop, developer and uh, functional consultant scoring. So again, partners will have a lot of wiggle room with the new partner capability score uh, model. And PCI requires 80 points today to get a gold competency. So we're lowering the threshold down to 70, and it's going to be that single designation level of the, the BizApps um, solution partner designation. OK. CoSell, how does that play into all of this? You love to talk about CoSell. <laughs> <laughs> I do love to talk about CoSell because I, I think it's one of the most valuable things that partners at least ask me about often is how does this better align with CoSell. While I'm not ready to say kind of objectively, here's exactly what you have to do and here's exactly how many leads or opportunities you'll receive from Microsoft or from the marketplace because there's a lot of conditions that go into that. Absolutely part of the work that we're doing with this new solutions partner designation exactly aligns with how we're talking about kind of marketing qualified leads. How do we get the right partners in front of the right customer at the right time? For those of you who, who've joined Inspire and you've heard Judson talk like that, there is absolutely some work in the background that helps us get there. And I would be remiss to also just recognize that those advanced specializations today, which are going to be called specializations, again, simplification, we're dropping that word, come October, just to reiterate, October 3rd is when this actually goes live, GA, those are exactly aligned with how our sellers sell exactly by the sales plays at which they are measured from a performance standpoint. And so we are making a concerted effort to focus any time that a seller is looking to, to sell with a customer, with a services partner, we're absolutely recommending and guiding them to use a partner with a specialization. Okay. So um, is it safe to say that a partner that's already been engaged at in like biz apps and they've already had some, some point system associated in the past, mm -hmm. 
the, this program will probably be easier for them to adapt to because th there's a, a, a bit of a, a relationship that they're, they're used to. Yeah. On the other hand, if a partner just learned about it, they probably have more to chew off. I mean, is that? That's, that's exactly right. We, we expect that a lot of this change, and it is change, and we acknowledge that. And essentially, that's why we're giving so much time, why we're saying, hey, none of the benefits that you have today go away. You can make the choice to make the move to Solutions Partner before October 3rd, or you can wait until your next anniversary date, or even the following anniversary date to make that choice, or if it takes some time, because a lot of these numbers are trailing 12 months, or they're looking at last year's performance, absolutely it will take time to reach those new numbers. But you're spot on, Dave, that some partners that maybe haven't been asked to measure some of these things or recognize some of the customer ads, right? Net customer ads is a new thing we're asking you to measure or at least report your association with those customers. It's new and it'll take time. And I, I literally, there are operators standing by waiting to help you with this more than you would ever know. So please, I would just make the first plug to go to partner.microsoft.com, go to Partner Center, We'll show you this, we'll show you Tyab's real life experience. And just take a look at how many points you have. And don't be alarmed if you have 12 in your core area of business today. <laughs> don't be alarmed if you have five today. Because a lot of what we're seeing in, in many of the tests that we've done is that we just don't, we have partners that are not reporting everything associated with revenue growth, associated with customer ads, associating with net new deployments. Those are three new key metrics that we're looking at rather than just revenue sales. No, no, I get it. So benefits package. Um, can you talk about benefits package? Yeah, so the benefits package, um, you know, another paradigm shift is the second you earn those 70 points, you get the badge. So you don't have to wait to get your, um, you don't have to wait till your anniversary date to achieve the badge. So that's the first kind of instantaneous benefit is as soon as you hit those 70 points, irrespective of when your anniversary date is, you get that badge, you download it in Partner Center through Logo Builder, and you can start marketing it um, in any which way you prefer. The other thing is around the benefits. Um, you know, today we, we kind of throw the kitchen sink at you, um, and a lot of our IURs or the, the product benefits, they never even get activated. Um, so we've become very strategic in the benefits that we are providing from a product benefits perspective for each of the designations. It's really meant to help you grow and develop your business. So we provide a lot of sandbox environments for, for demos and POCs. We're really trying to give you everything that you need to successfully uh, promote the solution that you are um, engaging with with the customer. So it's very focused also on Azure credit specifically. Um, Go-to-market strategies, so having direct contact with our support team around um, architectural design, if you will, getting um, co consultations around that, marketing materials. So. That is very similar. The go-to-market is very similar to what we offer today with competency. So it's very, I wouldn't say it's a like-for-like, like, but it's very similar. I think the biggest differentiator you'll see is how strategic the, the product benefits themselves are and how closely they are aligned to the actual solutions partner designation that you're earning. The uh, six solution areas, uh, the benefits, are they, how, do they, how do they vary? between the six. I don't want you to go through every one of them, but is, is the core set the same or are they quite distinctly different across the six? Yeah, they're, they're pretty different. There are a few core components. I mean, there, I don't have them all memorized, but I think there's one designation that still offers on-prem licenses or product benefits because that still aligns to the business uh, and then other ones focus on, on, on the cloud subscriptions more heavily. Some focus more on Azure uh, credits. So it, it's distinct. There is some light overlap, but you'll see very clearly why the benefits are associated to each designation. Irrespective of how many designations you earn, you get to stack benefits for the solutions area. So if you get all six, you get six sets of benefits. We don't limit that at all. Uh, for the advanced specializations, now going to be called specializations, this is a new muscle for us as well. We are now offering benefits uh, for all of the advanced specializations. Today, we just offer them for uh, the, Azure the Azure advanced specializations. 
stacking as well for the advanced specializations. Um, you can stack up to three advanced specialization benefits going forward come October. Okay. Um, so we're all used to the, what we know already, the silver badge, the, the gold badge. Will there be an, a new badge? What will it look like? Yeah, I wish we had an image of it. Um, so yes, there are six uh, badges, one for each of the solution area designations, and then there is an Uber badge. So if a partner earns all six designations, they get a seventh uh, cloud badge that uh, signifies that they have earned all six of the designations. So again, those are available instantaneously as soon as, you, as soon as you've earned those 70 points. We get the question, okay, I got 70 points, but then the following week I dig deep down to 60 or 59. That's fine. You hit that 70 point at a point in time, you are awarded that badge, and by our eyes, you have, a, you have been awarded the designation. So we won't touch you, we won't look at your points until your anniversary date hits. Well, we'll check again. Are you at that 70 point? So, um, just also wanting to clear up some of the, the misconceptions people might have around points dipping and how that impacts you. We really just want you to get those 70 points and we're going to leave you alone until your anniversary date. <laughs> and, and Dave, I, on the logo specifically, or on the badge specifically, it's really important to note that it's now locked with the Microsoft brand, with the actual Microsoft Windows logo, or the Microsoft logo. So that is a differentiator that uh, we didn't have in the past. And just to give an example of some of the benefit packages that are out there, if you achieve any of the Azure-related specializations, we're providing $18,000 of Azure credits, bulk credits that are much more flexible than the VS, those credits that come with the VSE seats that you've had in the past. And if you achieve any specializations, as Catherine mentioned, you can stack up to three. There's an additional $36,000 of Azure credits. So you can see how very easily you could get to over $100,000 of Azure. If you're talking modern work, we're providing 200 seats of E5. And with any specializations you add on top of that, it's another 50 E5 SKUs per. And then when we're talking business applications, it's 100 seats of Dynamics 365 and an additional 25 for every specialization after that. And just imagine when we're talking security, it's roughly half of Azure, half of security. So just to give you an idea, and at partner.microsoft.com, which I'm sure you're already typing into your web browser now, there is a PDF document that has 22 pages that enumerate all of the benefits that are allotted to you once you achieve your solutions partner or specialization. And, and good point, there's also no charge. From a, from a revenue monetary standpoint, just the, what you call the MPN fee today, there's really not much of a change from roughly around the pricing of gold. And there's no additional price on top of achieving any advanced specializations. So, so far, this has all been, seriously, good news, good info. Let's, uh, let's flip it just a little bit. And, and that is uh, some partners feel uh, either left out or this program just doesn't fit them. Mm -hmm. And, and how, how do you address those partners? Is, is it, I'll even load the question for you. Is it Microsoft's intention to purposely alienate, get rid of some partners so you have fewer partners? Or is it just that they don't understand yet where their fit is? Of, yeah, of course not in terms of alienation. One of the key pieces, again, that I'll reiterate at least three times this presentation or this panel is that if you like your benefit package today, Microsoft absolutely will continue to invest in its partners in your organization to help you grow. You can maintain those benefits um, as, as long as you want. And in terms of the partner types that may feel left out, right? I'd love to have a show of hands, actually, who is an app builder as well, at least in addition to your service or managed service. ISVs, app builders? One, two, three, four, five. Maybe 10%. Uh, six. So uh, maybe 10%. Maybe, maybe yeah, it's, it's no secret that you might be feeling left out. We've heard a lot, plenty of feedback on that. Of course, I'll reiterate the Azure IP Cosell program, the ISV Connect program, the marketplace transaction fee reduction that you recently saw. I'll also maybe lesser known for startups early stage. Founders Hub just came out. Last month, Charlotte Yarconi has a blog from the 8th of March. Great opportunities for some significant investments that Microsoft is making in those early stage startups. But for those more established ISVs, 
we're working on that, right? And, and not just we're working on it, we are actively, this team is actively in design for ISV programs that are more in line with how you go to market. You know, things like industry specific or line of business application specific, as well as some ideation within the solution areas that we cover. I'm not prepared to announce anything in particular now, but as Rodney mentioned in his announcement or in his conversation with the IEMCP last month, we're going to be coming out with that in the very short term. Well, if you want to share now, you can. <laughs> you would love that, huh? <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, so you made a statement. You said some things aren't changing. So give us some honest uh, uh, examples. What is not changing? What, what's going to stay just the way that it is? Yeah, so if you're a silver partner today and you're going to need more time to achieve the designation, um, when it's your anniversary date, buy your silver benefits. Buy what you previously had last year with your anniversary date. Same situation for any current gold partners. If you need more time to achieve the designation, when it's your anniversary date, buy your current cold benefits. You can do that on an annual basis. Even partners that achieve the designation, they can buy their legacy benefits if they want. They don't have to buy the new designation benefits. So we're giving different cohorts different options. So um, a lot of flexibility in the type of benefits you want to move forward with as well. There is no change to the fee. If you are a gold partner today, it will be the same fee when you achieve the new solutions partner designation. Um, I think the go-to-market strategy benefits are pretty much like for like, uh, like they are today. Anything else you can How about action pack? Uh, currently, there's no change to action pack. So uh, for partners that, uh, and I believe you can buy action pack benefits in addition to your competency, your legacy competency benefits at the time of your anniversary date. So the anniversary date is very aligned to buying benefits. In between your anniversary dates is when you can earn the badge. So I want to keep decoupling how it works today. It's not how it's going to work in the future. At any time when you earn the 70 points, you get that badge. And then when it's your anniversary date, you get to decide, do I want to buy the legacy benefits, even though I've qualified for the new designation, or I haven't yet qualified for the designation, I'm going to buy my legacy benefits, whether they were silver or gold. You can't upgrade. So if you had a silver competency and you have an anniversary date coming up, you can only buy your silver uh, legacy benefits. You cannot upgrade to gold. And if you're gold, you can continue buying your gold uh, legacy benefits. Okay. Tayab, we have not ignored you. We know that you're there. And if you've caught on to this a little bit, uh, we have the, the Microsoft representation. Tayab is a partner, like a lot of you. And um, uh, so Alpha Bold, and why don't you start with a little introduction? What, what, what does, you know, what do you do? Uh, Alpha Bold started in 2018. Uh, we are a Microsoft partner. We have multiple silver and gold competencies. We are a very diverse partner in terms of our offering. So we do Azure, we do biz apps, we do Dynamics 365 CE. We are close to 90 employees now. We won the award for MSUS Partner Award, Dynamics 365 Customer Service last year. So, uh, but this change was, uh, my recommendation to all of you is when you go back today or tomorrow, just make sure that you check Partner Center, look at this change because it's, it's a significant change, and you'll have to maybe reorient your business or align with how Microsoft wants us to pitch our services to our customers to be able to cope up with this. Because there are lots of changes happening, and this is yet another one. But overall, from the customer satisfaction standpoint, I think if we try to comply and get in line with what is required to be able to get specialized in these areas and get uh, what do you have my business solution partner is for? Uh, become that business partner now, we would be able to offer better services to our customers. So that's kind of my just two cents on this, but I do feel that it's a significant shift from how many partners attain the existing competencies, because you could become a silver even if you have maybe one or two consultants, you can cross train them, you have them take some certification exams, and then you have a few customers and you are 
your silver. But now I think the focus is mostly on, first of all, from the competency standpoint, having more strength, going deeper, having better understanding, and then be able to continuously sell as well. So you need to, you need to invest in marketing and sales and at the same time be that trusted advisor, but also be a sales-driven organization to be able to align with these. So those are kind of my, uh, and I've been looking into it only recently as well. So I'm not an expert on this, but these, these, these are some of my takeaways from what I've seen so far. So the, the first thing I'll share with you is, is that when I turn around and I look at Alpha Bold, and the reason that I invited and, 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 and want them part of the panel is I, I'm going to, this is my words, I put you in a uh, medium upper size partner size. And uh, there's some folks that are 10, 20 employees. I got people involved in my peer groups that are 200 and 800 employees. So I think you're really in a, in a sweet spot that, that you had to go through all of this learning that so many people in the room, whatever stage they're at, you're, you're not that, that far off from, you had to go through that cycle yourself of growing your business. And so I think there's a lot of ways to relate. So my, my first question really is, is uh, when you saw this program, what was your first response? What was your first reaction when you saw the program and, and you know, you dove in? Uh. <laughs> When I first heard about the program, I thought yet another change. And when I saw it, I was scared <laughs> because uh, we had very little points in some of these uh, areas, solution areas that we have now. But then you have to understand what are the components of each of the solution areas and how does your organization align with one or two of those and what do you need to do to be able to reflect those points because it's just the dynamics of it. You need to be able to attach yourself as a C or D or Some of the partners do a very good job at that. And some, when they achieve a certain competency, they don't really bother much about it because that's what we gain out of it. But we have to kind of stay on top of that now with these new changes that Microsoft is doing. But my first reaction, uh, you guys better look at it as soon as you can. <laughs> okay. Um, if I understand correctly, you've already been inside the partner portal. You've already kind of peeked at your numbers, and I think we have some numbers. Uh, you know, you would think I would know every slide that goes up on the, on the board, but I got a team, and they kind of do some of the slides, too, that I don't see until I'm standing here. So I think we have uh, some slides uh, to share. So I get to see these. Uh, for the first time myself. Boy, it's a big screen, uh, but I think you can probably see it from out there better than we can see it standing underneath it. And of course, if it's helpful, we also have a monitor over here, whichever one works for you. But maybe um, you can walk through what we're looking at and make sense out of it for us. Yeah, so this is where, um, this is the landing page of the, the Partner Center dashboard. So this gives you a very quick quick and dirty yeah. view of how you're tracking across the six designations. So um, you'll see all six here. We have it kind of cut off here. But it's just a very quick snapshot so you can see where your points are today. We make these updates on a uh, daily and monthly basis. So skilling points are updated daily. And then for the other two categories around customer success and performance, those are updated around the 15th of every month. So just something to keep in the back of your mind. Um, just a couple nuggets as we've been talking about this. You really hit the nail on the head around um, start investing time now. That was a big lesson learned for our uh, BizApps partners. Uh, they really kind of waited until their anniversary date was coming up before they started investing time and energy to understand what they needed to do. Don't do that. Um, start educating yourself today on how the points work. Each of the six designations have different requirements of how you achieve the, the designation. So um, just start to familiarize yourself with this. It's like going back to your, your university days of studying for an exam. Start getting your head wrapped around how the points work here. The other thing is around the points, making sure you have your partner uh, associations in place, whether it's PAL, CPOR, DPOR, whatever the case may be. 
We can say from experience, sometimes customers have trepidation around perhaps PAL association or CPOR. So it might take you time to get your customers, your clients comfortable with getting those associations in place. So don't wait to do that. The other thing is around the skilling within your organization. Make sure that the employees within your organization are associated to your MPN ID. If they're not associated to you, when they take an exam and pass, it's not going to be reflected here. So really make sure you have those kind of nuggets in your back pocket between now and October, and then as well as your anniversary date when you can start making decisions around the types of uh, benefits you want to move forward with. That was just my little spiel. Yeah, on. I, I want to add one more thing to that. So for example, uh, you asked about my first reaction. So today, we are gold partners with DevOps, application development, cloud platform, cloud business applications, and maybe silver with six others. And when I saw this, we don't make 70 points in any of them. <laughs> so we're not making that um, categorization of solution partner as per this. So I think uh, Catherine is right. It does take time to associate yourself, especially if you have EA-based uh, customers. You have to reach out to them. You have to fill forms and get them recognized. So you better start working on it as quickly as you guys can, because it will take some time to get from where we are for Alpha Bold to get to 70 points in most of these uh, categories that we have. Hey, Tayeb, let me ask you a question. Based on what you know now, and the points that you're missing to get to 70, if you had to take a shot, educated guess, on how long it's gonna take you from today to get to 70, are you talking a week, a month, a year? How long do you think for your organization? So it, uh, it depends on the area, because there are six of them. Uh, so for example, if you look at BizApp, for example, we are gold partner right now, and I think we have 30 some points. So we need 40 more points. And mostly those points that we have are based on our certifications. So the points that are missing are primarily based on customer ads and deployment, which means that if you guys are also missing points on that, it's going to probably take some time because you need to make sure that you could have enough customer ads in the next six months or so, so you could get to that 70 mark in that. So I think it's going to vary based on each uh, area that we have in there as to how you would go about strategizing to get to those 70 points. That's kind of my takeaway. So what you see up here on the screen, we started with the um, overview dashboard. So that just gave you a quick snapshot into the six designations. And then if you click on more details, I believe it was, um, we use the digital and app innovation um, designation as an example. So you can see here that um, Tyab has zero points for performance. And you've maxed out your, yeah, you've maxed out on your customer success. So that's good. You can forget about that for the moment, OK? Um, but I think you have 58 points. Yeah, for this one. Okay, so you're not thinking about 100 points, right? You're thinking about 70, 70. points. Okay, 70 is the magic <laughs> 70 number. 70 is my here. target. So you need 12 more points. So um, if you get two more individuals certified for intermediate exams, that's eight. If you get just one more person for advanced certifications, you get another four. So you're you're at 70 right there. But there's a caveat. You need to have at least one point in each of the subcategories. So even if you have 70 points between skilling and customer success, you haven't earned the designation. You need to have greater than zero points in each of the subcategories for net customer ads, intermediate advanced certs, deployments, and usage growth. We care about you getting one net customer ad just to get points on the board. That's, that's all we care about. Um, as long as you have greater than zero points for performance and you have the 70 points and you have greater than zero for the other, uh, the other subcategories, you have achieved that designation. So that might trip somebody up and cause them to maybe create a support ticket because they're confused. Hey, I have the 70 points, but it says I don't earn the, the designation. That's because you likely have zero points in one of the subcategories. So, while I would really push Tayeb to get the skilling, um, lock that in, he'll get the 12 points he needs, he's still gonna need to get one of the net customer ads. So for this particular designation, it requires three to get 30 points. So each net customer adds is 10 points. 
So he could take a different approach and get one net customer ad because he still has to get points on the board there. And then he can get one individual uh, certified and intermediate or one individual certified and advanced um, certifications and he will have achieved that designation. So um, allow me to throw a little elephant in the room and, and that is uh, your ads, your net customer ads and I saw required three uh, which would seem very, very attainable. But one of the, uh, the challenges that I hear is, is that, especially on the SMB side, that they have to be greater than 10 seat clients. Help us understand if that's true, and if so, why? Yeah, and I, I know you brought this up earlier in the podcast. So when we look at um, partners who, or customers who have less than 10 seats for the modern work um, SMB designation, they typically aren't buying services associated to those licenses. And if we go back to our survey, when we talk to our customers, when we ask them, what are you looking for? We talked about they want technical capabilities, but they also want experience. They want experience in doing these services related engagements. So the data right now is telling us that when a partner, when a customer has less than 10 seats, they're not also getting services tacked on um, with, their, with their partner engagement. One of the beauties around this model is it's malleable, it's configurable. I know we haven't touched competencies in 15 years. That is not our mindset with the designation. So as we get more data and hear more from partners directly, we are very open to continuing to adjust the thresholds and the criteria. But as of today, and what the data is telling us, you know, th we're moving forward with the, that you have to have at least 10 seats to be eligible for the SMB track for modern work. So allow me to take this opportunity. I know some people, no matter what I ask you, won't vote. I get that. I'm gonna ask you to break that rule, <laughs> and I'm gonna ask everybody to vote for a second, because this is to your, th this is for you. So I'm gonna ask a question. And you have three people here from Microsoft, whatever the answer is. So here's my question. I want you to raise your hand if you have customers that are under 10 seats and yes, they buy services from you. Raise them high. I'm not that, I, my memory's not good, but I'm trying to figure out a ratio. I would say that's the majority of hands. Okay, I appreciate that. Because that allows them to hear directly and I'm not being judgmental meaning I've, I'm, I, I hate to use the word clueless. I don't like it when I talk and I say clueless. But I'm clueless what the partners are that gave them the feedback. So I think it's important for them to have a room full of partners and share your feedback with them so that they can decide with that feedback what they're going to do. So thank you for participating versus I don't answer polls. <laughs> Yep. I think that was really worth your time to do. I want to add uh, one more thing. So based on the solution area, it's different. So for example, if you are going for BizApp, then a customer ad is a customer that you invoice $1,500 or more every month. I mean, we don't Which if you are selling like Dynamics licenses, it's Done. probably close to 15 okay. enterprise licenses for Dynamics 365 CE. So it depends upon the solution area as well. It's not just always 10 uh, seats. So you'll have to look into that. Yeah, that's, oh, do we not have? One more. There we go. Yeah, just on the 10 seat question, it's really good. And, and this is exactly why we do these kinds of things and love having the opportunity to have the stage here with you, Dave, and, and with Tayab, is that we want your feedback. That's the whole point. And we're actually in a really great spot where we are able to now co-design every partner program change that we are making. It, it's one one of our key principles, in fact. And so if you want to take a look at this QR code before you sign up, though, what this is is the Partner Advisory Council, for those not familiar, we, I think we have six seats open that are coming open. There's, the next session is in two weeks. This is a place where you can come under NDA, of course, and come help us provide your feedback. We ask a lot of questions, so there, there is a lot of homework, and there's a lot of work involved. It's a two-year commitment, but have a look use the QR code, and we really want your help. We really want your feedback through this process, and so would love to get to understand a little bit more if you're interested in 
talking further about Microsoft Cloud Partner Program in these new solutions partner designations, or I'd love to get additional ISVs in this space, especially for those of you who raised your hand earlier, please fill this out. And we're really looking for partners in between that roughly 50 to 500 employee range uh, with a variety of offerings in market services, managed services, ISV. Uh, would really love that feedback. Excellent. Um, we're almost at time, but what I want to do, um, really for the, the two of you, I appreciate your being here. Uh, what, um, give them a, a call to action. How, what would you leave them with that when they go here, on a fun note, they got to race to the office and what should they do? I, I hope already you've gone to partner.microsoft.com. You've taken a look at the solutions partner designation. Maybe you've watched the video that Rodney had sharing some of this insight and doing a blog with Jenny Zarate on our team. I hope you looked at all of the 22 pages of the benefits that are in store for you if you achieve this 70 point threshold. And absolutely, as Tayab mentioned, please go to Partner Center and take a look at how many points you have and take a look at where you have opportunities or more likely gaps in the data that's being reported so far because perhaps you weren't associating yourself with that net new customer ad. Friday would be a great day. On the 15th of this month, you'll see any customer ads that you landed last month, so in March. That's, uh, that would be the key call to action, is, is to avoid any, at least, uncertainty about where you sit. I would really be doubling down on skilling. Five out of the six designations give you half your points alone, um, but 35 to 40 points alone in skilling. I know I mentioned you have to have points in every subcategory, but it offers more reassurance and more wiggle room, um, the more points you can get in that particular um, category. If you have consultants on the bench right now, that's a great opportunity for them to be able to study and take that uh, certification so that they're not being taken away from um, client engagement. So I would really be putting a lot of um, attention around getting your skilling, your skilling house in order. No, awesome, awesome tips. I really, uh, uh, I think you're spot on. And I want to give some thanks. So Rob, Catherine, Taib, Dan. You got to come this way, Dan, for a photo. So you can actually come right around this corner over here. I think, well, yeah, I didn't realize both sides. I don't know. I've never been on that side. <laughs> so first, let's give them a round of applause for being here. And then uh, let's 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 take a. Uh... Hey, hey guys! On, on behalf of Microsoft, I really want to thank you all for your partnership. I know as I've had engagements during the day today, um, a lot of times what we do is I ask the team to run to the to the green room and say, "Hey, let's make sure we're taking get, care of these partners. Let's note down the things that they're saying." Uh, if you're looking for the team at Microsoft that is accountable for these changes, the buck stops here. We have a massive a massive uh, group of folks at Microsoft that help get this work done. But this is the strategy team. A lot of this work gets decided in a co-design model with all of you and with key influencers like Dave and the amazing work that he does, the amazing work that the International Association of Microsoft Channel Partners leads with us. And so we, we wouldn't have got here without your help. And we do need your continued feedback as we progress towards general availability of this. So on behalf of the company, thank you so much for the work that you put in and for your partnership. Appreciate it. And thank you, Dave. Thank you. Let's do a photo. Friends to you, don't waste your time.